Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. It is the weekend. We're going to move into some special selections. I don't know if you saw the announcement video that aired yesterday, but special selection requests are open again. Hit up the description. There's a link in there for the PayPal donation and some instructions to help you get through with that if you want to specifically select a song for the channel. Now, today's selection comes at us from Chris Randall. He says he'd like for me to check out Artifacts Perio, the song Epirion. And you know what? Let's do it. All right, I'm really digging the, uh, the imagery right here in the uh, album cover. I like uh, it's it's it, the album's called Time and Place, and which is interesting because usually it's time and place, but now it's time in place. Nice little play on words there. Plus, we have the life cycle of this leaf from inception to the you know the death of the the leaf. So yeah, pretty cool imagery. Let's get into this song. I have no idea what a perion a, a peron means. Uh, so yeah, let's dive in. Love those vocals. Beautiful, clean, wide. Yeah, real nice top edge to them. Interesting boys coming from the, the left side. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, I'm really digging the uh, ghost notes here on the snare. Really letting the song breathe right here. Creating this really nice atmosphere. There's beauty to it, there's a bit of haunting aspect to the atmosphere. I'm really digging that. Yeah, that heavy reverb really does a lot of work in creating this unnatural feeling to the sound.
yeah, really playing with offbeat ideas there at the end. Those last 30 seconds. Aw, oh, man, I was going to move into something, too. Uh... Okay, this one, uh, this one gets saved. I gotta check that out later. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was... I dug that. That was, uh, like, sort of like a little bit of a math, rocky, lighter gent. Um, and I'm probably getting a little bit of that just because... It sounds like a softer periphery song. And I'm, I, I want to say most of that comes from the vocalist. It, it just reminds me so much of Spencer's vocals. Um, and I mean this in the most endearing way that I enjoy this because it reminds me so much of one of my favorite bands. Um, so... Yeah, I don't I don't want to sit here and make comparisons all day. I I try not to do that, but I do want to bring it up when I feel it needs to be brought up. And uh yeah, there's just the drumming, some of the guitar parts, some of the rhythmic ideas. It just reminds me so much of a periphery ballad. Um and that's just I mean, that's just, just right up my alley. So Let's get the comparisons aside. Let's talk about some of the stuff that's going on in here. Um, I mentioned that there's a lot of atmospheric work going on. And yes, 100%. Um, the guitars, for the most part, aren't playing me melody lines. The melody is mostly being put into the vocalist. And the vocalist, ugh, just gorgeous melodies. We're going to get to that later. Um... But a lot of the guitar work is to create texture, it's to create feeling and emotion and texture. I already said texture. Atmosphere is what I meant to say. Um, we have that hyper-reverb warble sound, uh, warble tone that's used a couple of times. Um, the instruments tend to just pick one or two notes and bounce between them with rhythmic elements rather than... Um, harmonic or melodic elements and uh, it, it really just feels so often that the, that the band is going for a tone or an atmosphere just sort of some sort of soundscape for the vocalist to sing on top of or within and uh, yeah that 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 kind of pervades through the entire track however that brings about the spotlight onto the vocalist. They're the one that has the most amount of movement to their uh, their lines, and I think that that was intentional. Um, I'm not sure what the vocals were about, but they seem to be fairly passionate and involved, which is definitely the time that you would want to put the spotlight on them rather than allowing uh, other instruments or the band as a whole to really be heard uh, you know, individually. And the vocals, man, some of these lines are just gorgeous, especially played on top of some of the more dissonant or harsher elements like that warble or like some of the uh, distorted uh, guitar tones. Um, it, it's just this nice contrast between his beautiful poppy clean vocals and then some of the grittier sounds that they can make from their electric guitars. And... Yeah, it's just a really nice contrast that creates what I said earlier is that there's this haunting beauty to it. There's definitely something a little less beautiful under the surface and that comes entirely from the texture and atmosphere that the band's creating where the vocalist is providing mostly the beauty to it. Um, however, um, the beauty of the vocals is not present all the time. He does dig into some uh, distorted cleans and maybe even at one time a fry. Um, and it's it's like this beast trying to pop out and it's just it's holding him down, just not letting them not letting the beast come out. And uh, so that's that's an interesting little 
thing right there. I am curious about other artifacts, perio tracks, where maybe they do go into harsher elements, whether that means, you know, full on breakdowns, uh, more metal inspired music or harsh vocals used primarily during sections or entire songs rather than here where it's used to provide a little bit of ornamentation to an otherwise poppy vocal style. I also really dig some of the shifts from the cleans uh, into the the head voice, the falsetto. Um, it's not overused. I think it pops up once or twice, and I, th I think it's just very tasteful, and it allows some range to be added. And I think that's also what the harsher vocal elements do as well, is just to provide a little bit of range into the lower end that maybe he doesn't naturally feel he can sing, or um, maybe he just doesn't enjoy singing that low, something like that. But his clean pitches tend to be all within... Uh, a very similar range, and he uses his head voice and his growl, not his growl, his uh, his harshes to kind of enter other areas, other ranges that he doesn't do in his cleans, uh, you know, his, his chest cleans. So, yeah, really interesting uh, thing there. Uh, like I said, those are kind of used to provide ornamentation and to sort of dot out some segments that are different than his cleans. The drums I want to talk about, I feel like they're hidden a bit, and I don't know if that's just my first listen, because the spotlight was on the vocalist. Every time I tried to go to someone else and check out what they're doing, inevitably, inevitably, the vocals pulled me back. I found myself constantly returning to the vocals, even if I haven't checked out everything else the band is doing. And it's just because, like I said, they were providing a lot of the drive and momentum of the song. Everybody else was kind of, um, I don't want to say set dressing, but they were creating the atmosphere for the vocals to uh, excel the way that they did. So, uh, yeah, I... As much as I really wanted to check everything else, I couldn't. So that's one reason why I might have felt the vocals, need, I mean, the drums needed to be a little bit more present. But I I also feel like they were just a little low in the mix for what they were doing. Uh, they were providing a lot of the rhythmic complexity to the track. And I feel like some of that was lost because your average listener is really going to key into the vocalist. Uh, like I said, even I am trying to branch out to other instruments and I keep getting pulled at, pulled back just because of that's where the spotlight is present. So yeah, I do feel like the drum is getting a little, it needs just a little bit more spotlight, maybe, maybe just a little boost in the mix. Um, because there are some really cool things going on in there with, uh, offbeat, uh, syncopation and the ghost notes which were just barely audible I only picked up on them because I was expecting them if I had written that part I would have put ghost notes in it and I was looking I was listening intently for the ghost note if I wasn't doing that I don't think I would have picked up on them they are just so quiet um, and but that section was mostly hi-hat and ghost notes on the snare and then an accented snare like uh, I don't know, like once a bar, once every other bar. It was a it was a pretty sparse area compared to the rest of the atmospheric sections that came through. And I think it just it was phenomenal. I just love the way that the snare and the hi hat were dancing around each other. And like I said, I just think it's kind of a shame that I don't think too many people are going to notice it. And again, it might just be intentional because the song is designed to spotlight the vocals, but. Yeah, there's just some really cool things going on there. Uh, I guess maybe it could be an Easter egg. Your second, third, tenth listen, you, you know, your brain kind of wanders to the drums. You're like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. I never, never heard that before. Um, but I don't know. I, I just, I've talked about this before. I love clean mixes where everything can be heard individually without really missing anything and um, like I said I understand why we mix different ways why we have this pop style of mixing that elevates vocals why we have the post style of mixing that sort of flattens everything into one sound I get why we have these ways of uh, engineering a track but 
man, there's just a point when you lose some of the cooler elements for the style of the song. And I think that's kind of what happened here and why I'm still talking about this. The drums are doing some cool things and just some people aren't going to notice it. I, I would wager most don't notice it on the first time. So, yeah, I just that's kind of a bit of a shame. Um, but yeah, so this is sort of a pop math rock track with some with some interesting rhythmic elements to it and just a killer vocal line and honestly that's right up my alley it's just complex enough to keep me interested from start to finish and it has some beautiful hooks in it that are, are you know going to keep me enthralled for multiple listens and yeah those hooks happen to come from the vocalist which is a very pop oriented style of writing but I've mentioned before, pop's not bad. Pop is pop does what it does very well, and there's certainly lessons to learn from it and things to utilize from that genre in others. And merging pop vocals with math rock elements, I think, is a beautiful combination. It really gives, it takes away the best parts of pop, in my opinion, which are the hooks, and merges that with some of the complexity that we see in math rock that pop typically doesn't utilize and it's a best of both worlds for me maybe that's not for everybody but that's where you guys come in though hit me up with your comments let me know if it is your cup of tea or not let me know if you enjoyed this maybe it bounced off of you and more artifacts perio songs if you are a fan of theirs hit me up with some suggestions i even if i don't get back to checking them out on on the channel i am interested in them as a casual listener like this is if all their stuff is like this maybe a little heavier maybe a little lighter just a nice bit of uh variation on an album yeah this is something i could easily add to my library uh when you're done commenting go above that there's a description box with some links for stuff adjacent to the channel you can check out the patreon the discord the twitter the new special selections that have been reopened all the stuff's there beneath that beneath that like subscribe ring the bell i'll be back tomorrow 5 p.m eastern standard time 10 p.m utc with the final original run of the special selection groups after tomorrow we'll be done we'll be moving into new requests from uh, the reopening pretty excited about that and i know plenty of you are as well all right until next time remember to be critical and not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning afternoon or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos mm -hmm.